Afloat with Henry Morgan. Afloat with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. When Kitty tells Dietz that she is in love with Geoffrey Hunter and wishes to have nothing more to do with him, Dietz threatens to buy her from Bowlegged Jobson and thus have her as his possession. His treatment of Kitty causes a riot in the Dolphin Tavern, and the men strew the place with wreckage. When Hunter hears of the incident, he knocks Dietz into the harbour, warning him not to come aboard again. The next day, the governor, Sir Thomas Modford, tells Morgan that should another Dolphin Tavern incident occur, the authorities will close the place. He leaves the flying girl, followed by Dolores. On the way, she is stopped by Dietz, who has been lurking in the shadow of a building. He tells her that he has recognized her. How dare you stop and speak to me? Not so fast. First, I want to know what you do here in Jamaica. You are making a mistake. May I remind you, man, that I am Antoinette de Lacy, kinswoman of the governor of Jamaica, Sir Thomas Mossford. <laughs> I'm not making a mistake. Your name is not Antoinette de Lacy, it is Dolores Pizarro. <laughs> when you came aboard the ship, the flying gal, I looked on your face. I knew I had seen you someplace before. And just a little while ago, you came down off the ship, and I remembered. You see, I was in Cuba when you arrived with your father, Don Pietro Pizarro, governor of Cuba. And I saw you leave the ship just like you did a moment ago, and I remembered. You're up to some mischief. Yes, Spanish spy. Let me pass, or I will scream for help. You scream, and I will expose you. Go on, take the risk. Dolores, what is keeping you? We have an appointment. You will meet me tonight just outside the gates of Government House and talk to me. Else, I tell the Governor who you are. I certainly will not meet you. All right then. Tomorrow I go and see Sir Thomas. Tonight it is to be Senorina Pizarro at nine o'clock, or else tomorrow I go to the Governor. Wait a moment. Ah, who the devil isn't bursting in here like that? I'm sorry, Captain Morgan. I thought you said come in. Well, now the door's open. Come in and shut it. I'm glad it's you, Hunter, and nobody else. Why, Captain? What's wrong? You've caught me at my secret cupboard. See a sliding panel in the wall? Until this moment, I'm the only person on the ship who knows of its existence. I'm sorry, Captain. It doesn't matter so much you knowing of it. You see... I trust you, lad. Sometimes your trust in me worries me. It's a great responsibility. I know an honest man when I see one. Look here, Hunter. I'll show you what I keep in the cupboard. My first loot of all my bucketing days. Take a look at that ruby. See the fire of it? How it catches the light and glows like Hades? And yet is so cool. <laughs> like the heart of some woman. Look you at these sapphires. Look at their blue, like the Pacific Ocean on a summer's day. Took that little lot off the mayor of a coastal town I once sacked. <laughs> now I made him squeal before he'd tell me where he'd hidden them. And look, you hunter. My biggest prize of all. The Aztec necklet. You've never held it in your hands long enough to take a good look at it. Hold it now. Beautifully fashioned by hand long since dead and crumbled to dust. Tell me, Captain Morgan, how much is the ransom of a bonded servant? Eh? What's that? I want to talk to you, Captain. You better put those jewels away in your cupboard and close the secret door. Well, now, uh, what's troubling you, lad? What is the price of a bonded servant? Hmm, that depends. Some are cheap if they're old and bent and ugly. Kitty's price is far above what you've got. Kitty? I'll know you I was speaking of Kitty. There's not much that goes on in Port Royal that doesn't come to the ears of Captain Henry Morgan. Look, you lad. I talked before to you about that wench. She isn't for the likes of you. Why, there's not a man aboard the ship who'd not like the price to buy her from Bowlegger Jobson. And she knows it, too. I only want to know what her price would be. Well, um, that is hard to estimate. You'd best ask Bowlegger Jobson. You see, Kitty's rather a special case. It is Kitty that makes the Dolphin Tavern far and above the other Quayside Taverns, as far as customers concerned. When do we sail on the next expedition? 
Oh, so you think you'll make enough out of buccaneering, do you? We all get a share, don't we? Sure. But many take part in my expeditions, and there are many to share the proceeds amongst. You'd best forget, Kitty. Oh, I know that you've taken her eye, and I know that although you had no hand in the actual riot at the tavern, it was started through you. Forget Kitty, Hunter. She's poison to a man like you. She'll wreck your life. jump. Uh, oh. And right into your arms I come. And what place could be nicer? Hey, Kitty, I'm I'm going to talk to you. Aren't you serious you're going to be? I don't want to be serious with you. I want to tell you how much I love you. No, Kitty. But no. I do. All my life's been changed. Whereas before, life was just the sun getting up and the sun setting and serving loud mouth cursing men with their drinks. And now it's all changed. There's a song in the heart and it sings all day. I love Jeffrey. Kitty, please, I want to talk to you. Why is it that after the life I've led, you should come so suddenly into my life and, and I fall in love with you? You're not in love with me, Kitty. It, it's only because I'm a little different from the other men who have come to the Dolphin Tavern. No, Jeffrey, it isn't that. I know in my own heart the way I feel. If it's possible for a woman to fall in love with a man so that nothing else in the world matters, then that's the way I've fallen in love with you. You have tried to help me, Kitty, and... I want so much to help you. It isn't your pity I'm looking for, Geoffrey. I want to get you away out of this place. I want you to be free forever from the humiliation of being worked as a slave. I would like you to be free forever from the demands of every coarse, brutal sailor who shouts at you for his drinks. And what you ask is impossible. That could only come about by someone buying my freedom. There must be some other way. How long have you been in Port Royal, Kitty? (laughs) Seems like a lifetime, but I guess it's nigh on two years. For how long is your sentence? If you think I can work my way to my freedom, you're mistaken. I was sent out here for life. What did you do? I got two convictions, both for the same thing. Must have been serious crimes. Aye. Serious to the man who owned the bread. Have you ever been hungry in a strange city? Been without friends? Yes, I I know you've been without friends. I was forgetting for the moment. But have you ever been hungry, really hungry, when your whole inside craves out for food? No. I was alone in England. I'd not come from Ireland long, and I was hungry. And the baker's basket was standing on the pavement. I couldn't help myself. My hand went out, and I took a loaf, but I was not quick enough. The baker came back, and he caught me. He sent me to Newgate for two years. For stealing a loaf of bread. And when I came out of jail, I was still as hungry as I was before I went in. And I thought this time I'd be cunning. When I saw another basket of freshly baked bread... I waited until the baker disappeared out of sight. And then I helped myself. But someone else saw me and gave me in charge. Already I had one conviction and not been long out of jail, so so they sent me to Jamaica for life. Such barbaric injustice should be allowed. What are these times we're living in? And when I came out here, I didn't care what happened. Four-legged Jobson took me as his possession. Well, I didn't care. I knew what I was. Just like cattle in the field. So... I just let me fancy play where it would. How was I to know that, that I'd meet you, Geoffrey, and, and that I'd regret what I'd done in the past two years? Geoffrey, you've not kissed me yet. I came here today to talk to you to try and help you, Kitty. Well, tis helping me you'll be by, by kissing me. Well, don't you understand it's wrong I should kiss you like this? But how can it be wrong? We're really alike. Your past are behind you and... Your future doesn't promise much. Just let's be happy. The past hanging on to you, and and that's why you hesitated to kiss me. Let me make you realize that you're going to never regain what you've lost. And the future's only what you're going to make of it. And here waiting... Give me a start. I didn't see you standing there in the shadows. Hmm. So I thought it wise to keep our appointment, Senorina Pizarro, eh? You do not understand. You are making a mistake. A mistake, is it? Yet you come secretly to meet me because you are frightened that I'll go to the governor and tell him the truth about you. 
How is it that you are masquerading as Antoinette de Lacy? What has happened to the real woman? I might ask you the same question. What are you, a Spaniard, doing here in Port Royal? I owe allegiance to no country. I just work for myself. How much money do you want to go away and never worry me again? So I admit you are an imposter. I have admitted nothing. But I do not want you pestering me. I will tell you something, eh? It is quite true that the English ship, the Elizabeth Ann, was captured by the Spanish. It is quite true Mademoiselle de Lacy was aboard her and she was taking to Cuba, yes. And there you learned that the governor had never seen the Mademoiselle until you came to Port Royal in her stead. For what purpose, eh? You tell me. We come from the same country. Maybe we could help each other, eh? I will give you any money that you want if you go away and never worry me again. So you are up to some mischief, Senorina Pizarra, eh? Don't call me that, please. I owe no allegiance to the English. Do you think you and me a woman can out with them? Now, you pay me well. Maybe I help you in some way, eh? I can be loyal to you. Because at the moment I hate the English. And Morgan included. Morgan? So he is your enemy, eh? Listen. Maybe you can help me a lot. An unholy alliance is about to be made, which could mean disaster to Jeffrey, Kitty, and Captain Morgan. Listen to the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.